I'm Nick Gellner and we're at my wife and I's restaurant, The Antler Room, in Kansas City, Missouri. At first, when I entered the industry, I was just trying to keep my head above water. And that lasted for years. I'm not a naturally talented cook. It's all from practice um, and, and work, really, for me. Slowly, as you gain more confidence, you start to kind of find your own voice. And for me, that has been um, a pretty recent development, actually. I think every cook goes through a stage where they think that the more elements on a plate uh, the better the dish. And I still do like that kind of food, but I've realized it's not really for me. I like a few elements on a plate that all speak for themselves very loudly. I like really strong flavors that stand on their own. I spent four months in Copenhagen um, at Noma as a stage. The culture of the kitchen itself is what really made a mark on me. Just seeing how driven everybody was, I've just tried to bring part of that to this restaurant. When we first opened, I wanted to make sure that the kitchen was as collaborative as possible. I wanted everybody to feel like they had ownership of this place. I wanted everybody to feel like they could be as creative as they wanted to be. And it's really worked out in our benefit, I think. I have two sous chefs, Nick Chiaro and Andrew Heimberger and they have really, really helped to push our food forward. Chef Andrew will be making a foie gras torchon with a squash carpaccio. And then Chef Nick will be making a beef tongue with salt baked rutabaga and rice chip. When I came in to dine a couple of weeks ago, I was just really blown away by how beautiful the plating is. I mean, it's just, it's simple and it's colorful and it's just gorgeous. Yeah, we don't have very many components on a lot of our dishes, so it's even more important that they are striking when they hit the table. This particular dish with the squash carpaccio, I had never seen anything like that on a menu. And when I tasted it, all of the different elements were so perfectly in harmony with each other, but very distinct. This is uh, Chef Andrew's dish. And um, the first iteration of it was good, but it still needed some work. And he just kept at it. And now it's one of our uh, most popular dishes on the menu. And this is rutabaga and, and beef tongue. Yeah, so this dish is the brainchild of our other sous chef, Nick. On the bottom is salt-baked rutabaga. So whole rutabaga that's been encased in salt and whipped egg whites, a meringue. What we love to hear at this restaurant is when a guest says, I didn't know what anything was, but I loved all of it. That's <laughs> great when we hear that. So if you could encapsulate the antler room experience. When you guys were envisioning this, how did you want it to feel? I wanted it to be comfortable and cozy, but it's the full experience. It's not just the food. It's not just the wine. It's not just your service. People are not just paying for one thing anymore. So you mentioned that you had a number of pop-ups as you were creating the concept and getting things ready. How did that impact the way that, that you actually came through to the opening. It built our clientele. It created a buzz. It helped us figure out drinks. It helped us figure out food. Some of our staff came through that. It sounds like being able to have those, you know, those test runs essentially really just helped to hone in on the concept. Priceless. And everyone was so positive and really nice and just wanted us to open and be successful more than anything. And I think that's a very Midwestern kind of mentality that we're all we're in it together. Yeah, that was really powerful, I think, for both of us. So the pop-ups uh, that we did in the year before we opened the restaurant were extremely important for us. It taught us a lot about the clientele that we were going to have at the restaurant. It taught us what ideas we had would work and what ideas wouldn't work. I can't really see us being able to open this place without those pop-ups.
the name of the restaurant. Where did it come from? What is the thing with the antlers? (laughs) That's what I'm asking. So So we couldn't think of a name at all. It, It was terrible. One of our friends had told us about a building for sale in the West Bottoms that was the Antler Lounge. And I had kind of always been wanting to tie some sort of Kansas City thing, but not be so blatant about it. So I had written just the Antler on a list as here's our long list of things. We have a pop-up in a month, we better come up with a name because it can't just be the Leslie and Nick show. (laughs) (laughs) So Nick came in and wrote room on the end of it. Like, okay, now it's it's something, it's a place. You said that you wanted this place to feel very cozy and yeah. welcoming and comfortable. And using the yeah. word room, as opposed to cafe or restaurant or bistro, it, it yeah. feels very welcoming, just in the name of it. Yeah, I want it to feel like someone's home that you were having dinner in. So the two of you mm-hmm. run the restaurant. Natasha, yeah. who is Nick's sister, she does all the amazing pastries. Yes. Your father-in-law helped to build out the interior. I mean, this is a this is a family yeah. restaurant. Yeah, I mean, my dad built all the tables and the host stand, and my mom made the curtains in the bathrooms. Like, my stepfather negotiated our lease, and <laughs> it is a... Uh, it's a family affair. Yeah, yeah, very, very connected. I still feel like we have so much to do and so many things to make it what we want it to be. But at the same time, I'm happy and I'm proud, but um, you know, also looking forward to the eventual day when we can you know, maybe have a night off sometime. <laughs> you know what industry yeah. you're in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I've heard rumors people do take nights <laughs> off. <laughs> So what is it that that makes you want to be here day in and day out creating these dishes? I actually like the culture in professional kitchens. I like that it's a meritocracy. You get judged on what you have actually completed. Every day you know what you've made and you used your own hands to make it. I didn't want to make food that was easily forgettable. That was a, a important thing that Leslie and I always talked about was we wanted people to remember what they ate when they left the restaurant. We try not to worry about what's happening around us as much as possible. We kind of try to just keep on doing what we think we should be doing and that's kind of given us a distinctiveness I think. <laughs>